look at this. I must take a picture. Someone seems so jealous. Be tired after all that climbing. Let's take a little break. I brought some fruit and water for us. Yay! Food! What kind of goodies did you bring? Hey, don't be a party pooper. It's not like Kale is a stranger or anything. Besides, the best way to compliment a chef is to show passion for their food. Xiang Ling taught Paimon that. I prepared a nice portable dish that forest rangers like to eat called Pita Pockets. I hope you'll like them. Uh, wh whoops! Ah, no! You dropped it on the ground! Not to worry. I wrapped a few layers of oiled paper around each pita. They oiled should be paper? fine. That's it, thing. Oh, I nearly had a heart attack there. You ready? For food? Not when I almost got killed. Several times. Those pitas are amazing! You're quite the cook, Kale. Thank goodness you wrapped them in paper. Paimon wouldn't have been able to sleep at night knowing something so tasty had been wasted. <laughs> you really know how to compliment the chef, Paimon. Since you liked it so much, I'll be sure to give you a copy of the recipe sometime. I'll even include all my personal cooking pointers. So you'll be making your own pita pockets in no time. Yay! Thanks, Kale! It's hard to believe someone as diligent as you could have clumsy moments, too. Oh! <laughs> uh, I guess it happens from time to time. So, uh, Kale, don't you think that Tainari's a little too strict with you? He won't let you touch anything without his permission. Paimon knocks stuff over all the time flying around the Traveler, but he's never said anything. Everyone has their clumsy moments. No, no, you've got the wrong idea about Master. Uh, <laughs> sure, he may seem a bit harsh at first, but with some time, you'll see that he's actually very kind-hearted. I've heard the veteran rangers say that Master is from some ancient and mysterious race that is known for their cunning wit and reclusive nature. You've heard of the Academia, right? Well, there's a group called... Uh... Um... Um... Uh... Uh... Um... Boo... Something? <laughs> well, 
anyway, because Master does a lot of research on plants. Sages from the Academia have written him many times, inviting him to take up an official position there. But Master declines their offers every time, saying, Sumeru City is too noisy. It'd be bad for my ears. <laughs> I know, right? They've always wanted to pet them, too. <laughs> uh, ahem. <laughs> anyway, Master could have easily left the rainforest to take up a position at the Academia. But he chose to stay here instead as a forest watcher, helping the locals every day and passing on his knowledge to trainees. In fact, Master's the one who taught me how to make pita pockets. Really? Paima would have never guessed that. Oh, speaking of Tainari, he was the one who took care of you after finding you passed out yesterday. He even carried you all the way here. Okay, but uh, we know that it just happened 10 minutes I'm ago. I'm still kind of upset, though. He kept scolding Paimon the entire way here. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Master might have been overreacting a little. But, uh, it's mostly because Paimon wouldn't stop yelling, Why, oh, why? Is he going to die? It probably started to get under Master's skin after a while. Really? Paimon annoying him that fast? No! you <laughs> hey now even Kali's starting to laugh Ugh, that's it Paimon won't forget this it's time for some Paimonial wrath no don't touch me what are you doing Paimon like that oh well it's getting late now uh let's hurry back to gundarverville i think master and the others should be back by now too huh what was up with kai just now and why is she in such a hurry all of a sudden look she's practically running back paimon can't even see her now Ah, Traveler, you've returned. Yep, we're back! Uh, have you seen Kale by any chance? Oh, Kale? Yes, I saw her go into her room just a moment ago. Oh, okay. Guess we'll just have to wait and talk to her tomorrow, then. <sighs> Paimon was thinking all night about what happened with Kale. And still can't figure out what the problem might be. Maybe she's in a better mood now. Let's go check on her. Ah, it's you two. I was just about to go look for you. Huh? Tainari? What are you doing here? Where's Kale? I came to check on Kale's condition. To put it simply, she's not well. You mean she's sick? How could she be... Oh, wait a minute. Could it be because of what Paimon did yesterday? No, no need to worry. <laughs> something as small as you could never harm her. Uh, this sickness is something that Kale has been dealing with for some time. Kale has been more excited than usual since you two arrived. A little too much so, to be honest. She hasn't remembered to take care of herself. If you read the manga, you may, ma may know why. Just read the manga. <sighs> I suppose it's understandable, though. She hasn't been around anyone she considered a friend for some time now. It must have been refreshing for her to have you two here. So, Tainari, 
What's really wrong with Kale? Um, let's take this conversation elsewhere. Kale just fell asleep after taking her medicine. She needs some peace and quiet. All right, let's continue our conversation here, shall we? To be honest, I hadn't realized that you're that honorary knight from Mondstadt until Kale told me just now. I've also heard all about your deeds in Liyue and Inazuma. So, just to clarify, what I'm about to tell you about Kale is not because of who you are or your past feats. Instead, I am going to tell you because... Okay, before that, I imagine that when we reach Chesnai, all the eyes, you know, maybe the second last region, they have to say like all the other nation in the line. And I can't wait to see that. Well, because Kale asked me to. And honestly speaking, I was against Kale revealing her past to you. But she insisted, saying you two treated her with sincerity and as a friend. So now she wishes to reciprocate the gesture. So Tainari, what exactly is wrong with Kale? You said this is something she's been dealing with for some time. Just how serious is it? Right. Ever since she was a child, she's been afflicted with a disease called Elazar. Elazar? Yes. It's a disease unique to the lands of Sumeru. It is characterized by dark and hardened scales that form on the body. At whoa, first, whoa, whoa. The afflicted may only feel mild numbness on the affected area of the skin. However, as the disease progresses, one may begin feeling fatigued and even experience peripheral paresthesia. Wait, you're telling me that Kolej has the scales? Okay, I need to look the Ikodina again. In its final stages, the disease strips a person of the ability to control their own body and they effectively become completely immobile. That sounds terrifying! Okay, it's been a long while since I looked the manga. But wasn't she actually a experiment and that is some kind of beast that... Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Wait, hold on. So when Kale seemed to be acting a little clumsy earlier, it was because... Correct. That would be the effects of Elazar, which is precisely why I do not want her carrying or holding anything, lest she ends up hurting herself. With appropriate treatment, the disease can be effectively controlled before it progresses to a more serious stage. However, there is unfortunately still no true cure for Elazar. Nevertheless, Kale's mother still hoped that there was something out there. She handed Kale over to an organization known as the Fatui after one of their members lied and said they had a cure. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait, wasn't she an orphan with the, the rest and, you know, the other kids? You need to look up the manga. But, uh, yeah, Fatui, yeah. What? The Fatui? Ah, it appears you're already familiar with them. That'll save me some explanation. Anyway, the person who eventually rescued Kale and brought her to me for care said that she had been given to a harbinger known as the Doctor. I have no idea how this Doctor managed to do it, but her case of Elazar was completely stable for all the years that Kale was with them. However, Kale's days with the Fatui were anything but pleasant. Kale is a resilient individual and always tries to appear cheerful, but her experience with the Fatui has left deep scars. Even now, she can still feel deathly afraid of someone touching her. Oh, Paimon had no idea Kale's been through so much suffering. Oh, by the way, Paimon, Kale wanted me to tell you that she's sorry for scaring you yesterday. She also wanted both of you to know that she's sorry for hiding her illness. She doesn't need to apologize. None of this is her fault at all. Well said. I hope you'll get a chance to tell her that in person the next time you see her. 
Kale once thought that it would be impossible for her to have any real friendships. I trust that you two will never let my trainee experience such emotional pain again. Don't worry, Tainari. We'll take good care of her. Well, it's not too serious at this point. She overexerted herself the last couple of days, which is what led to her breakdown this time. As long as she has taken her medicine and gets plenty of rest, she should get better. Though, I must admit that Kale's condition was much more stable when she first arrived here in Gundarvaville. She was interested in the work of the forest rangers the moment she saw us. I could see that she was serious about learning, so I felt compelled to ask her to join us. Her stamina has gotten much worse recently. Though a moderate amount of physical exercise is always necessary, I'm afraid the long-distance patrols are a little too much for her now. <sighs> All right. Now that I've told you about Kale's past, I think I'll head into the rainforest to find some ingredients needed for her medicine. I'll see you two later. Yeah! We'd like to do something to help Kale, too! All right. But I must warn you two. The rainforest is a dangerous place, especially for someone who's still recovering like the Traveler. You must follow closely and listen to every instruction. No problemo! Let's go then. We'll be looking for a plant known as Lunar Lotus. It's often used to help those afflicted with Elazar recover their energy. Hey, Tainari? Where exactly are we going to find this plant? Lunar Lotus can be found all over the rainforest, but it often grows right here around Gundarvaville. Hmm. Given the name, it sounds like we should be looking for it in the water. You are correct. Lunar Lotus grows in the water. When fully mature, they look like giant blue flowers floating on the water's surface. Quite an attractive species, if you ask me. The large petals are actually the plant's leaves and sepals, which surround a very small flower. You should note that many of the plants found in Sumeru have names that are contrary to their species. Take the Kalpalata, for example. The plant is not a lotus at all, but rather a vine. And then there's the Sumeru Rose, which is not a rose, completely contrary to its name. Oh! Huh. Um... Okay, then. New Tapaima. Never bring up the topic of flowers with Tainari. You actually keep notes? Okay, and let's say this one. There should be lunar lotuses growing somewhere in this area. Let's split up and begin searching. If you could manage to gather four of them, that would be sufficient. We'll rendezvous here once you've gathered the needed amount. Let me take a look. Hmm. Good, very good. These are all excellent quality. I'm quite glad you two came along. Your exploration experience helped save me a lot of time here. It seems we even have enough time to stock up on some other things I need. Hey, Tainari! Ah, yes, that's Amir and the others. But didn't they just set off not too long ago? What are they doing back so early? Let's go find out what's going on. Tainari, thank goodness we found you here. We were just about to head back and find you at Gandarvaville. What's going on? We just discovered a withering zone. The withering is back? But the patrol route you were on should have been already cleared just a week ago. It reappeared so quickly. 
Can you tell me the exact location? It's up ahead, deep in the river valley. It's appeared in a spot that blocks nearly the entire narrow part of the valley area, so we decided to come find you as quickly as possible. And the radius of the contamination? Sorry, I couldn't get a clear enough view to tell. No one in our patrol team had a vision, and it appeared to still be spreading, so we didn't risk getting any closer. Okay, I understand. You made the right decision. I'll go deal with it right away. In the meantime, please guide these two back to Gondarvaville. Wait, Tainari! Why don't you let us help you? You two have only just arrived in Sumeru. You're still unfamiliar with many things in these lands. There's a unique type of anomaly that occurs in the Sumeru rainforest. It's called the withering. The affected areas not only cause nearby vegetation to wither, but it's also lethal to wildlife and even people. If you don't carry a vision, then you should think twice before approaching such places. Yes, Amir is absolutely right. I wasn't kidding when I said the rainforest is a dangerous place. As Amir said, only someone with a vision, that is, the power to manipulate elements, will be able to resist the withering's corrosive effects for a time. That's right. If any of the forest rangers without a vision come across a withering zone, we first make a record of the location and then have a ranger with the proper abilities deal with it, like Tainari here. Only someone with a vision can venture within a withering zone and find a way to deal with it. But you don't seem to carry a vision. Don't worry, he may not have a vision, but he's a real pro at using the power of the elements. Hmm, it seems the rumors about you are true. In that case, all right, you two may accompany me. We typically only teach visitors how to identify the withering as they're about to leave Gundarvaville. We'll make an exception today and show you what it looks like up close. Okay, I'm gonna stop a little here because something came up. So I see you in a second.